On the Healthy Human Revolution podcast, Dr. Lori Marbus interviews nutrition and lifestyle medicine experts and extraordinary guests whose informative and inspiring stories will empower you with the knowledge to transform your life and health. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marbus, and I'd like to welcome Gabriel, the plant-based Gabriel, Gabriel Miller. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on, doctor. Ah, well, thank you for joining. This is fun. Oh my goodness. Your little one is so precious. Oh my goodness. She's We're, adorable. We think we'll keep her. So. Yes. I tell you, uh, having three myself, one named Gabriel, um, it's just, it's such a blessing. So I, it's fun to see you enjoying seeing her eat these healthy foods, which gets us to you and your story of eating healthy foods. What is your journey? What is your story of how you came to a plant-based diet? Yeah, well, I grew up not eating a plant-based diet. I ate more so the opposite. It was very animal, uh, animal protein heavy. Um, always grew, grew up always wanting to uh, be a professional football player or be at least a college football player like my dad was. Uh, and so that was kind of the, the path that I was set on to and that I went down even uh, beginning as a, a youngster in the first, second, third grade, you know, always, always having that as a goal. And uh, as it would be, I put my mind to it, did a lot of hard work and ended up um, getting a full ride scholarship to the University of Nebraska and uh, became a, a starter there. I was a, a high school All-American and um, one of the top two ranked players out of my, out of my class, a five-star um, player. And uh, everything was going pretty good. Got to Nebraska and uh, ended up winning the starting role as a true freshman and wow. um, ended up playing that whole season, having perfect snaps. Uh, and ended up going and winning the Gator Bowl. I mean, you see, I got my oh, I fantastic! Just, just the Gator Bowl champion uh, beat Georgia there, and uh, everything was going really good. Uh, I was what I needed to be to be a long snapper uh, in college, to be a starter, and kind of working my way up to the next level. You know, weighing around two hundred and forty-five pounds, six foot, six foot one, and. Um, you know, obviously as a normal person, that would be heavy, but that's kind of where I was as an athlete. And unfortunately, uh, suffered a career ending back injury going into that next season. Uh, it was a, a weight room injury and uh, ended up getting to the point where uh, my back was so bad that I ended up going into a six and a half hour back surgery right around my, uh, my birthday, nonetheless. Uh, and wow. so six and a half hours later uh, to, to hopefully put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Uh, but at that time, going into surgery, I knew that it would, um, it, 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 we, it was kind of understood that that would be the end of my career. And so uh, wow. that's where I found myself as a 19 year old, <laughs> former college football player, former starting athlete at a major Big Ten school. Um, mm. I went into surgery, and then six and a half hours later, you come out of surgery, you're no longer a starting football player. Uh, you no longer know, hey, did this work? Am I going to be able to walk normal again? Am I going to be ex exercise? Am I going to be able to hold my future children ever again or, or, mm. or ever? Uh, mm. Am I going to be able to live a normal life? And those mm. are questions that, you know, right around your 19th birthday, you don't expect to have. Um, and so uh, coming out of surgery, doctor says, uh, you know, coming through checkups and things are going and relearning to walk and doing all these things. Uh, the, the, the big thing that was really hammered home was, well, you got to lose the weight now, Gabriel. You, you can't be 200. <sighs> and I had actually, after my, after my injury and kind of going through the physical therapy and acupuncture and uh, water therapy and uh, all these different things, trying to, um, trying to do, you know, get to the point where working the back without going under for surgery, uh, I had ballooned up to about 260, 265 pounds and wow. found myself at the heaviest I'd ever been and at the lowest physical activity I'd ever been uh, and at the lowest morale I'd probably ever been. Uh, and just definitely a low point, uh, a low point certainly in my life. It was uh, mm. definitely not where I planned to be at 19, especially mm. when just a few months earlier, I was training and preparing for my my, my next year as a starter in the college football and thinking that there's a year or two left before you could play professional football. So uh, wow. that was where, that's where my journey with health started and it didn't start <laughs> off good. <laughs> so now tell us a little bit about what you were studying uh, in school. <laughs> Yeah, so at the, at the time I was studying uh, to get a degree in livestock production. So, uh, and, and I did end up getting that degree. It's not something I necessarily use for that exact purpose these days. Uh, but basically I tell people I have a four-year degree in breeding, feeding, fattening, slaughtering, slicing, and serving every 
uh, animal that old McDonald ever dreamed of. And wow. uh, again, not something that I'm clearly practicing these days, right. uh, but, but I do have that degree in livestock production and animal sciences. And, um, and that's really where I turned, right? Coming out of a back surgery, my doctor who himself was overweight uh, yeah. is telling me you've got to lose weight. And I said, well, how am I going to do it, doc? Well, yeah, you'll figure it out. You know, you <laughs> try some things or, uh, you know, a- absolutely no nutrition training with that doctor uh, whatsoever, clearly. Uh, and wow. so where I, where I turn, I turn to the people that I trusted, the, those professors, uh, those nutrition professors, those mm. people who were telling me about every, um, a- every metabolic or every pathway from, you know, you take that little bite and this is everything that happens to it. And they sound really smart and they, and they do know what they're talking about. They're very educated. Uh, these are some of the top pl- uh, people in their field. And so I went up to Professor X. I said, you, you are my nutrition professor. I can remember after a class saying, hey, we're learning about this stuff. What should I do? You know, I'm trying to lose weight and I'd like to do this and that. And uh, your professor says, well, you, you, you cut out the plants. What are you eating? Are you eating rice? Oh my gosh, eating potato. You need to eat more chicken, more beef. You know, that's what you got to eat. And, uh, and so that led me on to months and months and months of trying the different animal-based fat diets, ketogenic diet, the low carb diet, the JJ Virgin skinny diet, all these, di- all these different, um, you know, what, what seemed to make sense, especially when my mm. well-learned professor is telling me all these things. Mm. Um, and I would try them and try them and try them and maybe lose a few pounds here, but they were very restrictive and they didn't make me feel any better. I was feeling worse. And then a mm. lot of times I would not lose any weight and then I would kind of go off the rail and then jump back, you know, gain more weight than I had. And that probably sounds very familiar to, to listeners who have mm-hmm. who've tried to lose weight. Um, and so that, that kind of led me into this, this, this circle of, you know, trying this, trying that, trying that until I got to the point where, you know, most of my family had gotten to most of my obese family members were at where it was like, we've tried everything, throw in the towel, it's genetics. It just, oh, wow. it is what it is. You're going to be fat. You're going to be overweight. There's nothing we can do about it. You know, it's just, it is what it is. Um, and, and that's where I'd gotten to. I, you know, I felt like I'd tried everything. You know, most people would say, and I'm sure you get this a lot, doctor, is, is people say, well, I've tried everything. So you don't, you know, I've tried everything. Right. Um, right. And so I felt that way. <laughs> um, and, and that was until I was sitting in my, that nutrition class, uh, thinking that I tried everything, still believing that what my professor was telling me was the right mode of action, uh, trying to lose weight. Uh, and I remember just clear as day, looking over to, to the, the, a friend who I sat next to most classes. I said, you know, there's something wrong with this picture. He said, well, what's wrong? And, and I said, I've been taking nutrition advice from Professor X for months, months, everything he said, I've done it. And for the first time ever, I mean, it just, you know, just your eyes open. I realized that professor was 300 pounds. I mean, oh. I had a 300 pound nutrition professor that I was taking advice from. And that sounds silly. And looking back on it, you know, I laugh wow. at it. Wow. Um, but so was everyone else in that college class taking nutrition advice from that 300 pound professor. And, wow. and so from that point forward, forward, I realized that maybe there isn't another way, but if there is, I'm definitely not getting it from that guy. <laughs> and so uh, that led me on the path of, just begin searching again to say, I've tried all the animal-based diets. I've tried low carb. I tried this, that I felt worse. I didn't lose weight. I ballooned up even more. What more is there to, you know, to offer? Uh, and around mm-hmm. that time I had, um, you know, just watched a few documentaries, you know, there was, um, uh, cowspiracy was out and, you know, just things that I would have never agreed with being an animal, you know, being a livestock production major, uh, but some of the things that were being presented made some sense. And mm. I was introduced to Dr. McDougall around that time and Dr. Esselstyn and Dr. Um, Clapper and, and, and many other doctors there and Dr. Popper and, you know, all these um, you know, people who have been speaking about <laughs> losing mm. weight, regaining your health with a plant-based diet. Uh, and so it seemed to make as much sense as what I was listening to from my 300 pound nutrition professor. Uh, wow. And so I decided to give that a try. And um, pretty much went vegan overnight, being a, a junior, senior level animal science classes. And uh, you're sitting there and then you're, you know, they're telling you about how to raise chickens and goat and, and meat and, and beef and all this stuff and pigs. And, and you're sitting there thinking about, oh, I've got my rice and bean, or I got my vegetarian chili or <laughs> eat that at home. And, and so, uh, so I, I began doing that and uh, it happened somewhat slowly over the first couple of months. Right? I, I thought, okay, I'll get healthy when I cut out the meat and go buy the, the vegan meat alternative junk, mm. or I'll cut out the, the 
I was a big nachos fan, right? I used to eat a ton of nachos. And so I say, all right, I'll cut out the meat. I'll get the vegan junk alternative. And then I'll cut out the cheese. And I'll get the vegan junky alternative. And I'll cut out the sour cream. And I'll get the vegan junky sour cream, you know, oily and uh, processed. And, mm. and so I tried that and I didn't really gain any weight at that point in time, but I didn't feel much better. And I was kind of just moseying along and and then I really started reading what Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. McDougal, Dr. Clive, what these doctors were actually saying. And it was not telling me to go vegan. It was telling me to eat a whole food plant-based diet. Mm. Uh, and once that really kicked in, I get asked that question a lot is, well, Gabriel, I mean, how do you do, you know, you cut out the meat, you were learning about the, how you, once you start doing it and you start feeling so good, you, you, mm. you, you lose a, you know, as someone who had a hundred pounds to lose, it wasn't like I, um, had a couple pounds here and there and I felt a little bit better. It was to say that every single week that I lost a pound or I lost two pounds or I lost half a pound, I felt better. My back felt better. Mm. My complexion cleared up. Overall, my knees felt better. It just overall, my health was improving. And so there was never a point to say, well, I missed that because uh, mm. nothing feels as good as, or nothing tastes as good as a healthy feels. And, and mm. I, I just, I, I, so I began doing that and um, continued a whole food plant-based diet. And over the course of the following two years after adopting that, I lost hundred pounds. So at about an wow. average of um, about a pound a week, about 104 weeks, give or take a pound here, half a pound there. Uh, I lost that hundred pounds. And, um, and, I, and I also was able to do that coming off of a back surgery to where my physical capabilities, you know, at the beginning were you know, walking a few steps here or there from the bathroom. Wow to the kitchen, to, to the living room, to bed, you know, back and forth, you know, with a walker at the beginning of, of this kind of transformation in my health uh, to the point to where, you know, it wasn't until maybe I had lost the 85, 90% of that weight before I could even really begin moving around a lot uh, wow. to where I was, I was back exercising to some degree. So the majority of that weight was lost through what was at the end of my fork and not <laughs> what I was doing on a treadmill. That's Fabulous. And there's so many stories that resonate with yours. A hundred pounds. I mean, people are just, they're, they'll get surgeries to lose a hundred pounds, but you're just doing it with transitioning diet while you're being taught <laughs> animal agriculture. This reminds me of T. Colin Campbell, you know, where he was, you know, uh, learning how to improve livestock and consumption of livestock and then turns into a plant-based diet eventually. So very, very fascinating. So how did plant-based Gabriel get born? Well, I was, you know, finished up with my degree and was, um, you know, a couple of things had happened. I was, um, my dad had had some major knee surgeries. He had some actually infections in those knees mm. or in one of those knees and was at the point where he was almost going to lose uh, his leg. And so at that point in time, I was uh, finishing up school. I was, I was working, had a, had a good job. I, we were in Lincoln. My wife is a, a math professor, but she was finishing up her PhD at the time. And so we uh, had made the decision that I would, I would actually uh, step down from my position. I would go back home to Indiana to kind of help care, take care of mom and help take care of dad mm -hmm. as he was fighting to save his leg. Uh, and so during that time, I fixed all their meals. I had them a whole food plant-based diet. They lost weight. They started feeling better, uh, but you can't do that forever. I mean, I could do that forever, uh, but it was a time I needed to go back and, um, you know, be with my wife. And then we, you know, she was, you know, move, we were planning on moving for her job. And so, um, and, and I was there also helping some other family members, you know, helping cook meals for them or helping, uh, show some recipes. And, and then I realized, well, I'm not going to be here with them right here forever. So I, uh, I decided doing some videos and started coming up with some different recipes, uh, and basically out of necessity to keep my family on track, uh, plant-based Gabriel was born. And um, wow. kind of started with a burger recipe and worked our way up to, I don't know, we, we do a bunch of different, different recipes now. Uh, but that's kind of how it was started. And at the beginning of it, you know, get asked a lot is, did you always love cooking? Have you always loved cooking, Gabriel? Mm -hmm. uh, until I broke my back and until I began realizing that the only way that I was ever going to get healthy was by the food I ate. Um, that was the first time I'd ever really stepped inside of a kitchen or really had started mm -hmm. um, cooking, really eating uh, healthy uh, foods. And so um, fell in love with it. And I, I, I do enjoy, I do enjoy cooking. And my wife's a wonderful cook as well, wonderful whole food plant-based cook. And, um, but we, uh, but we do, we do spend a lot of time in the kitchen and, and we enjoy it. And um, I, I enjoy my time in the kitchen a lot, but I, I do enjoy my time outgrowing those foods even more these days. Yes. And I do love all of your posts regarding the garden. So tell us about your garden. So where are you located now? 
So we are in just outside of Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Okay. And so we. I was I was stationed at Langley. There. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just down the road. Um, so tell us a little bit about your garden, what you like to grow and gardening tips. I mean, well, uh, sure. I, you know, I growing up, I was grew up in Indiana. My wife and I grew up in Indiana and then went to Nebraska for school. And so uh, Indiana, not the, I mean, India is a wonderful climate. I mean, anywhere in pretty much anywhere in the continental U S you know, growing food is, is, is certainly capable and people and people, pioneers and indigenous peoples have grown their calories um, mm -hmm. out of the ground, depending on all the way North to down South. And so, um, certainly is possible anywhere, but being here in Virginia, it is certainly a lot nicer. Well, we have about eight to nine months of solid growing conditions. Oh, then, wow. Then those other three to four months are, uh, are months where we're able to either have plants that have already been hard or been growing and they can just kind of stay in the ground through the winter time. And so, um, we, 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 in, we, we've grown to enjoy that a lot, but, uh, my passion has really, you know, I didn't grow up growing vegetables, uh, but uh, once I realized that I could grow food that we were eating, it was kind of game on. And a lot of people trans are trying to move towards growing things like kale or carrots. And, and I enjoy growing kale and carrots, uh, but I really enjoy growing our staple crops. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the f I, when I realized that the foods that, that saved my health, those simple starchy staples, as I, you know, they call the simple starchy staples, um, those foods that people in populations have lived off of for thousands of years without being plagued by the chronic diseases uh, mm. that are running rampant in our modern world, you know, foods like rice, beans, potatoes, oats, corn, quinoa, sweet potatoes. Um, mm. Those foods are also some of the easiest foods to grow. Mm. And, uh, and, and when I realized that I could grow my family's calories, it was, it was a real game changer. And so nowadays we grow on about half an acre, uh, all people powered. So I'm out there <laughs> doing it, but it's out there either on my back or running around or my wife's out helping. Um, we don't have a tractor. We don't have anything like that. It's, it's all people powered, but we, we were able to grow um, around 95 to hundred percent of our, our, our family's calories out wow. of that. So sweet potatoes, uh, potatoes, beans, oats, corn, uh, a lot of traditional uh, indigenous type staple foods that um, wow. there's a reason that, that they've been around for so long and there's a reason that they are so healthy and, and health promoting. Absolutely. So now your wife, you said is a math professor? Yes. Excellent. And so you have a family now with little Bridget. So tell us how did that transpire because you can have a wonderful, healthy pregnancy as a plant-based eater. Oh, well, let's go back, actually. Was your wife always plant-based, or did you introduce this to her, or how did that happen? <laughs> no, nope. my wife grew up on a pig farm, so oh. she was not. Oh, my so goodness. She actually went plant-based about six months after I did. Oh, okay, about fantastic. Six months after I did, and, um, you know, been on board ever since, and she's a, a wonderful advocate for the plant-based diet and the plant-based movement. Um, wow. So she has not always, always been that, but uh, has been pretty much the same duration as I have. Um, but no, the uh, plant-based pregnancy, we, we uh, I will say like, and I am not a medical doctor. I'm also not, not a woman. So I did not <laughs> give birth to Bridget, but I was there hand in hand. And I was a big part of the, the process sure. uh, in ensuring that it was as healthy and, and as seamless as possible. Uh, and so what I'll say is pretty much like everything that your body was made to be healthy. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, if you put the right things in it, and, and unfortunately, if you do that at 70, you are going to see benefits. But if you do that at seven or seven mm -hmm. months, uh, you don't even have to have any of those adverse adverse um, factors. Mm -hmm. And so we we had we, we ate completely whole food plant based throughout that pregnancy. And it's funny, I, I don't think I, I don't think I, you know what, I do have it in here. Actually, I kept it around. Um, you know, there's, uh, you know, we, we worked with a midwife and, you know, they they talk about nutrition and things. And I'll just kind of show that, show this there. It's, it's got, you know, the different type of things you can see how much you should be eating of beef and chicken and eggs. And, and then you ask some of those same, and we work with a wonderful midwife, don't get me wrong, but, but not educated on, on diet and nutrition. Uh, but you ask those same people and you say, well, how, you know, what type of problems do you have? Well, we've got big, you know, big babies. We've got labor problems. We've got mothers with gestational diabetes. And we've, uh, you know, we've got all these different things. Uh, and our goal, just like our goal is to eat healthfully, to live a long time without being plagued by that, those chronic diseases was to have a healthy pregnancy. Uh, that was number one, to have a healthy baby and have a healthy pregnancy uh, without those common right common well so you know what else is common uh mm -hmm. well common pregnancy uh adverse reactions but also common diet and right. so eat that healthy whole food plant-based diet 
rice, beans, oats, corn, potatoes, sweet potatoes. Um, didn't didn't worry about you know making sure there was uh, you know a, a ton of this or a ton of that. It was are you eating a calorie sufficient diet built around whole plant foods? Mm-hmm. Taking B twelve, <laughs> and and once once we kind of got that rolling, uh, it was by all accounts through the medical practitioners who kind of were a part of the process and kind of everyone that we've talked to was probably one of the healthiest pregnancies that they've seen. And so, um, a very, uh, a very low stress labor, um, a healthy baby born and, um, now a healthy 13 month old Bridget Rose, who is, uh, beginning to enjoy whole plant foods as much as mom and dad are. Oh my goodness. And she's so adorable. Like I said earlier, (laughs) (laughs) but you know, you're exactly right. You know, introducing these foods at such an early age, well, even during, you know, the gestational period, which is so incredibly important for their future health. In addition to just when they grow, you know, they're born and what you're feeding them. But, you know, my kids were 13, 15 and 18 when we switched over That's been nine years now. So, but they're all plant-based eaters when I'm thinking, Boy, we should have done this sooner, but the, you know, this is a little different almost 30 years ago. <laughs> so as far as um, what you do with your, the, the blog and you're on Instagram and I see Bridget out there stuff. So really what is your most enjoyable part of all that? Is it the cooking? Is it the gardening? Is it your time with Bridget and the all doing all this? I, I can only imagine her with her own cooking show someday. That would be pretty. <laughs> well, we, we certainly, I, 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 yeah, we, we certainly enjoy a little bit of all of it. Mm. Um, gardening has certainly um, taken over a big portion of our life. Uh, gardening or subsistence farming. I don't know whatever you'd want to call it when you're eating the majority of your calories from that food. Um, but kind of how it's kind of all fit together. You know, we, we, we actually, well, this was before Bridget was born, but you know, we, we did the, the plant-based diet for beginners mm. and um, that came out last year. It was a bestseller. It sold over 75,000 copies um, within the, the past uh, 13, 14 months. And so that, that certainly helped a lot of people. And so our goal, really, it's not, it's really whatever we can do that, that can help some other folks who um, either were in the same shoes that I were, that maybe were in the same shoes that Erica was 13, 14, well, what, 20 months ago, you know, during her pregnancy, mm-hmm. uh, or those like my family members. And so we've, we've kind of fit it together to where we get to grow those foods that we take into the kitchen, that we make recipes with, that promote health and um, that, that promote that those things that, that we've, we've enjoyed like healthy living and weight loss um, and, and some self subsistence as well with with growing our own food but uh, certainly being out in the garden is enjoyable and now that I've got or we've got Bridget uh, it's it's even more enjoyable to see her running around and we've got the dog out there who's you know they're chasing after each other and they're all they're getting into the carrots or the kale or uh, you know getting into the sweet potatoes. And so we, we have to grow enough. We grow some for us, grow some for the animals, grow some for Bar- Bridget to pull out of the ground and grow some for the dog to eat. So <laughs> it's, uh, we, we have to grow a lot, but, but we certainly do enjoy it. And so I uh, suppose just basically what we can do to help others um, awesome. is the big thing. And, um, and understanding that, that what we're doing, you know, Bridget has certainly thrown a new um, a new angle into all of this and, and uh, a very wise person as, as we were kind of, um, Eric was pregnant. We had we had been planning for for to have a baby and and realizing how important that part of the human experience was, right? Of of bringing a new life into the world and and being the caregivers to not only nurture but to protect and to raise and to um, to send that that little human being off to uh, get off to a healthy start um, has certainly been. Um, been a wonderful experience so far and, and we've been enjoying every step of it um, but it certainly is a lot of responsibility and, and I always say it's either uh, you know whether it's responsibility for Bridget to make sure that we're feeding her the, the highest quality whole plant foods that we're putting her on a path to a healthy lifestyle or maybe that's responsibility for my mother or maybe that's responsibility for loved ones who are looking up to you to help them adopt a plant-based diet or to help them uh, you know reverse their chronic diseases uh, to help them uh, stop being plagued and stop digging an early grave because of those foodborne illnesses um, that are really running so rampant. And so for us with Bridget and, and even through pregnancy, it just really hit home. I mean, it really, really hit home was uh, while, while Erica, my wife was pregnant, it was to say that it's not like you're just eating, <laughs> you're growing, uh, you're growing this future, future baby, this future human being that 
that's going to be a part of our life forever. And uh, whatever you eat is going to dictate how healthy she is. And um, that doesn't always go across with even some midwives or, or some some uh, health practitioners in that field. But uh, because, you know, oh, just, oh, there's some protein in Cheetos, right? You know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but it's to say what you're eating not only affects you, but it does affect your loved ones. Whether that is Erica, my wife, as she was, you know, with preg pregnant with Bridget, or whether that's me with my loved ones who are looking up mm -hmm. to me or looking at me at what I'm eating and how I've adopted a healthy lifestyle. And so um, that's certainly been, uh, been a big part of the past couple of years in uh, mm -hmm. like writing the book and uh, bringing Bridget into the world has been uh, realizing that um, what we do has an impact and what we do um, can change lives. And hopefully what we're doing is helping to change those lives for the better. Absolutely. There are so many ripple effects. I've been using plant-based eating from my practice for nine years now. And it's been really phenomenal to see the changes that you can see happen very quickly. Um, but I would say too, you know, when as a female and you're carrying a female baby, their eggs are formed during that pregnancy that they'll have. So you're not only affecting yourself and your infant that you're carrying, but they're your grandchildren's potentially moving forward. So, yeah. I mean, it just, it really blows your mind when you think about that. And so getting back to, um, in regards to your parents, are they on the plant-based diet now? So my mom and my sister are, my dad unfortunately passed away um, oh. this past year. He had Sorry. stage four pancreatic cancer. And so oh. he ended up passing away very, very quickly, very sudden. But uh, my mother and my sister both eating a plant-based diet and not just them, but also um, my dad did while he, was, um, while he was alive for the past couple of years. Um, but also cousins, friends, other family members, my wife's mother and father, so my mother-in-law and father-in-law. And so we've, uh, we've certainly seen a lot of ripple effects in that, in that regard and, and look cool. forward to having many years, many more extra years with those individuals because of, because of that for sure. Absolutely. So I'm sure you get all sorts of emails or messages and amazing stories. Are there any of them that your favorite that you would like to share? You know, I think the ones that really ring true or ring home the most are the ones that, um, you know, a family, a mother, a father, both will reach out and say, hey, we really enjoy your recipes or we got the book and, and we're helping to feed our family with it. Uh, and the kids are enjoying it and the kids mm. are getting involved and, and the kids are kind of helping and, and, and they're realizing that um, not only are the kids realizing that, hey, they can have a hand in what's going on in the kitchen. The parents are realizing that, oh, wow, we can really help set them up for success health wise. Um, because I think most of us, the way we were raised or the way we grew up or the way we saw loved ones, unfortunately, succumb to so many um, mm. food borne health problems. Um, we realized that we, we can hopefully set those young ones onto a different path. And so when I get those type of messages, it's, it's amazing to say, hey, okay, that family has taken um, this information, taken my hard work and creating a recipe or doing a recipe video or growing food and showing how it's done. Uh, mm -hmm. And they've done it. That's great. But what they've done, what also has happened is they're instilling that in the next generation, which mm -hmm. has the potential to instill it on the next generation and the next generation. And, um, and we're not going to, we're not going to heal the planet before we can heal ourselves. And, and we're not going to do that until we realize that um, the, the diseases that are uh, destroying a healthcare system, that are destroying families, that are, that are um, you know, destroying health are, are those due to what you're putting in, you know, putting at the end of your fork three times a day, sometimes eight times a day. Um, yeah. And so uh, realizing the type of impact that that has both familial as a family for those, for those individuals, but also uh, community wide and um, nationwide worldwide, things like that is mm -hmm. um, a huge impact. And, and I know your work is, is certainly doing that as well. And it's, it's all, uh, it's all just a step to re when you understand what true health is, oh. you know, as someone who spent 18, 19 years, the opposite. Um, mm. and, and you, and you really get to realize, oh, wow, this, I, I can eat this food. I can feel good about it. It makes me, you know, and, and not only, you know, it, it not only is it good for me, it's good for my family. It's good for uh, the environment I'm growing it in. And so when you realize that and, and you can see others take hold of that and, and really put it to practice that, that uh, you don't forget those, you don't forget those for sure. You're exactly right. And so, you know, when I started this plant-based diet, it was basically by accident. I had a, I lived in, I live in Colorado and I was in Western Colorado after I got out of the Air Force and we settled in a small town called Rifle. 
kind of like it's kind of like your story of like <laughs> agriculture like i'm living in rifle colorado in the mountains and um a patient just mentioned she you know meat and dairy upset her stomach and make a very long story short she got better and her daughter who's 16 went on the diet with her pulled herself off two add medications and they came to my appointment her follow-up and said why was she able to do that and that conversation led me to find t colin campbell's the china study and nothing's been the same since and yeah. i literally went home overnight my husband lost 70 pounds the kids over time they can't but my daughter's graduating medical school plant-based my boys are plant-based they're in their early 20s but it's just like that's been such a blessing and joy to see them grow and take this and become a passion of themselves you know that they're wanting to move forward in some type of um some type of occupation to deal with plant-based eating and sharing this information. But the ripple effects, right, is so huge. We decided last year we land, launched a plant-based telehealth. So we're trying, I'm licensed in 49 states in BC. We have four doctors to bring on two more, but we're literally bringing telehealth to the entire country. And so um, it has grown and it's been really fun, very busy, very, very busy, yep. but um, I get it. It's just, you're driven, right? It's like, you can't not share this information. It's like, we got to get going. <laughs> People are suffering. <laughs> so I get it. It's, it's a, it's a, it's like you're evangelical about it almost. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I, I, once you, once you, once you feel how good a whole food plant-based diet can make <laughs> you feel, once you realize, you know, we were at a, a Super Bowl get together and it's once you realize to say that I had three or four bowls of chili that I had made, well, you know, sitting around, ah, Gabriel, that you eat a lot of food. No, 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 no. This is this is what I get to do and look like this, right? Right. I get to do this. Stay trim, stay healthy, uh, and it's not because I'm going home and getting on the treadmill. It's because I'm eating the right foods. Right. Um, and that's that's something that some folks it takes a long time to realize, and some others it says, oh wow, maybe I should give that a try. And, and just something I'll add there is to say. Um, you know, as someone who has gotten to see a lot of my family members adopt a whole food plant-based diet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and if you, you've been able to see that as well. You know, I think the two biggest things that um, have really kind of come true and it's not been uh, getting a, a big old carrot or a big daikon radish and beating people over the head and saying, <laughs> eat more plants, right. And, you know, eat right. your vegetables. Uh, it's been two big things. It's been uh, number one, loving them. So, mm -hmm. you know, people that are around you, you got to love them. You got to, uh, you got to understand that when you give some advice or you, you say, Hey, you should try this out. Or, you know, I give a book away. I say, Hey, you should try that book or, or mm -hmm. look at those recipes. Uh, you got to love enough to say that there's a good chance they're going to set that down and never look at it until you bring it up in another year or another 10 months, or it might be five months or it might be five years, maybe 10 years before they, they unfortunately mm -hmm. either have some sort of chronic health condition that gets them to the breaking point of saying, Hey, Gabriel, what were you talking about back then? Cause I need mm -hmm. something to change. Um, or hopefully it just takes to them to the point and say, hey, well, that makes sense. I'd like to uh, adopt that healthy, healthy diet, um, which goes to part number two of that, that, that is you got to lead by example. Mm -hmm. uh, I see oh, a yeah. lot of not necessarily, uh, yeah, some, some, some health practitioners, but also those who do recipes or those who um, you know, do, do talks and kind of make the circuits uh, is to say they can talk a big game, mm -hmm. um, but, but they don't either look the part they're not living the part. They're not eating the part. Mm -hmm. and, and that's eating a healthy whole food plant-based diet. That's not necessarily expecting to see results tomorrow, but understanding that if you're doing that long-term, you should be seeing those, uh, those health changes in, mm -hmm. in the way of the better, betterment of your health. And so mm -hmm. for me, it's been, you know, no, loving those people who maybe not eating this way, who need to, to have something change their life. Um, but beyond that, also leading by example, because I can tell someone, I can tell someone, I can tell someone what to eat and how to live and how to grow vet your own vegetables and do this or that. Uh, but if I'm not eating that, or if I'm not cooking in this way, I'm not, I'm not actually, you know, at a healthy body weight, <laughs> being mm -hmm. able to, to live a healthy life, um, then what I say doesn't really matter. It's, it's what mm -hmm. I'm doing. And so when you, when you do lead by example, and you do love those individuals because you can't expect to really help change someone unless you really have some, some, some input there in their life. Uh, and which makes it hard because those are the same people that frustrate you. Uh, but I have been able to see that change in, in, in dozens of, of loved ones and thousands of, of others who, who necessarily aren't in the, the close family circle, but are in the, mm -hmm. the internet world <laughs> circle. And so, uh, so those two things have certainly been big and, uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm certainly, um, very gung ho about it, but 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 without those two big parts of it, uh, all the talk, all the writing, all the the, the speaking doesn't matter. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's really walking the walk, 
and um, and actually having that compassion for those those individuals that were where I was at ten years ago, where you you know, and so uh, realizing that is has been big. No, I think you're exactly right. Compassion is huge, and this is how you lead by example with your kids because they're watching. They're gonna they'll follow you watching what you do much more than listening that yeah. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so, but uh, it, you're exactly right. And it's such a blessing to be a part of those journeys and to understand, but you do have to lead by example. I just turned 50 in last year. And, you know, I feel like I'm still in my twenties. I know I'm 50, but my brain and my body, like, no, no, we can still do what we want. I'm like, yes, we can. <laughs> so, you know, i um, training for my first 50 K race. Um, 31 miles before I'm 51. So, you awesome. know, you can do some really cool things. Um, my husband did his first Ironman at 49. You know, my, the kids, even when you're younger, I mean, my middle one, Jonathan, he can do 600 pull-ups in one hour. Wow. So who does that? That's plants, my friends, plants, plants, plants. So, you know, it's just, it just goes on and on and on. And there's so many incredible athletes and there's just, it's just incredible to see even people who are, 80 reversing diabetes that they've mm -hmm. had for decades and it's just um i could there's just so many stories i have one patient that's um actually interviewed on here she'll be being posted soon she's lost almost 300 pounds wow and to be with someone in that circumstance where they started at over 500 pounds and you see them lose 50 pounds in like six weeks and they can now buckle their seatbelt and cry it just brings home the message that this is such an urgent message too yeah. so um, it's hard not to be overly excited, but I get really passionate about when I'm talking to patients and I call it veggie crack. I was like, listen, you eat your vegetables, you get better. I feel good. I get a little dopamine hit. It's my veggie crack. So let's keep this going. <laughs> so, yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, absolutely. So let's get back to you in the kitchen. So what are some of your favorite recipes? What are some of Bridget's favorite recipes? Like where help us get started in the kitchen. Okay. So, so my favorite, favorite recipes in the kitchen are not complicated and I'll give you some more like recipe style things but I think for for the listeners to to really get the the overarching the big picture with a healthy whole food plant-based diet it's not to not to have a list of the the thousand things they need to go to the health food store to pick up and, and you know and, and the the 45 uh list or the 45 direction recipes that are going to take four hours and uh and, and you know how to you know do this i think the the big overarching thing and, and i have it in the book and 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 i told my publisher i said i'm not gonna work with you unless we put this in here and we <laughs> did and, and i tell folks that it's it's really the the price of the admission if you got this you know it, it's worth it and so the the simple starchy staples show you them there how to cook the basics and so if i if I if I'm talking to someone or someone asks, well, what are the what are the best recipes? Well, the best recipe is learning how to cook rice. It's learning how to cook a big pot of rice, a big pot of black beans, and bake ten pounds of sweet potatoes or five pounds of Irish potatoes and five pounds of sweet potatoes. It's it's learning how to cook a butternut squash. It's looking how to cook those things. Cooking your favorite simple starchy staples or those staple foods that you're going to be building your diet off of, those foods that you're going to eat the most of your calories from, they're going to be taking up the majority of your plate. Uh, and so when I talk to folks, a lot of my recipes are built around those for a reason. A lot of the recipes you find either on my website or in the book or, you know, I put them on YouTube or whatnot, we'll say four cups of cooked brown rice. It's not saying four cups of dry rice or four cups of, it'll say three cups of cooked black beans. Mm -hmm. And that's because I think it's so important to have cooked, ready to go, starchy staples in the refrigerator, either in the refrigerator or in the pantry that you can heat with whatever apparatus you have, some quicker some than others, but within 10 to 15 minutes have a cooked, ready to go meal. And so if that means having five pounds of baked sweet potatoes that you've baked, you pulled out of the oven, you've let them cool, and then you put them in some sort of airtight container in the refrigerator so that when you are just hankering for something to eat, you can pull out baked potato or two, you can pop them either in your toaster oven, in a microwave, throw them in the oven, do whatever you need to do, warm them up, slide them open, put some broccoli, you've got, you know, whatever, some vegetable on there, put, put some salsa on it. You've got a meal, right? Mm -hmm. you've, you've got something very simple there. I have a salad next to it, but you're going to be eating the majority of those calories from that potato. Uh, and that's what you're going to be living off of. Uh, same thing with things like rice and beans, probably six days a week, we will have rice and beans in some sort of fashion, whether for lunch or for, for dinner, uh, we'll have, uh, 
season, you know, mixed with some nutritional yeast or some chili powder and some cumin and have some sort of chili beans over rice or over a potato or sweet potatoes. Mm-hmm. And so I just want to really bring that home that, that, <laughs> that I, I can, I can, I can do recipes for anything. And I, I can tell you all the different, and I will I'll tell you a couple of good ones, but the biggest, most important thing to get down is understand those starchy staples, because if you, if you don't have them prepared or you don't have a way to prepare them, you are setting, you're up for, setting yourself up for success or for, for failure. Uh, because to go into dinner at seven o'clock and say, I'd like to eat at eight or eight 30. And I don't have anything cooked and ready mm. to go uh, is tough. Not to say that we don't do that on uh, often, but, but we always have those simple starchy staples. That's a habit that we've gotten into. We use an instant pot or we use the st- pot on the stove or use the oven, have a big pot of beans, big pot of rice. You know, it doesn't have to be rice or beans. It could be some other starchy staples that you like or those uh, whole plant foods that you're building your diet around that you're eating your calories from. And so I just want to put that there. That is where, <laughs> that's where I base all my recipes off of because I mm-hmm. think it's so important that whether you are a single person, whether you're a parent with a family of seven, a 10 or 12 or, you know, or your 20 year old college student or 18 year old college student, I think it's very important to have those staples ready to go. Because if you don't have food ready to go, where are you going to, where are you going to opt to? Hopefully you've cleaned out the pantry. Hopefully you don't have any junk food, but if you do, you're definitely going to turn to that over and over mm-hmm. again. You'll turn to that and you'll, you'll find yourself upset at midnight because you just went after the, the vegan junk food or whatever junk food. Um, mm-hmm. So don't have that in the, in the house, but uh, if you even if you don't have that in the house, but you don't have those foods ready, and you're going home from work, or you're you're you're, you're traveling here or there, uh, you'll you'll see some big flashing lights. You'll stop at the big big box <laughs> store. You'll do this or that, and and you're not going to make good decisions, as good of decision as you would make if you had a big pot of black beans, or you had some rice made at home, or you had baked potatoes or baked sweet potatoes cooked, cooled, and ready to go in the refrigerator. So I'll just start that with there. But some of my favorite recipes. For, for breakfast, breakfast, we build most of our recipes around oats. We love oats. We, we buy organic oats. We, we, we have rolled oats, steel cut oats, whole oat berries. Um, they're also something that's pretty, pretty easy to, not so hard to grow on, on even a smaller scale and you can grow quite a bit of them. Um, but, but oats, so we really do enjoy breakfast bakes. So it's uh, oats mixed with Oat flour, I grind. I just grind oat flour. You can buy oat flour. You can use a gluten-free flour. You can use a whole wheat flour uh, mixed with some banana, ripe bananas, apple cider vinegar, baking soda, and cup of, and, and either a plant-based milk or some water. And we make a bake out of that, and it turns into like a, a banana bread, thin banana bread bake that's ready to go in 25, 30 minutes. And so that's a, nice. a wonderful breakfast recipe. We also do enjoy steel-cut oats. In the in the you know, plantbasedgabriel.com, I've got a lot of different steel cut oat recipes on there. Um, lunchtime, dinner time, like I said, we really rely on those cooked rice and beans or potatoes. And so, uh, bean burgers, bean burgers. I've got a three two one bean burger recipe, and um, it's very simple. You can add whatever spices you want to it, whatever spices you want to. It. You make it however you like. I make it in a bunch of different ways, but you've got three cups of cooked black beans or white beans, or red beans, or pinto beans, or lima beans, or, or fava beans, cooked beans, does not matter. A lot of folks ask, well, what type of beans? Just use black beans, you're fine there if you use those. Drained, cooked, drained, ready to go. Three cups of cooked black beans, two cups of cooked rice, brown rice, you have white rice, white rice, just cooked rice, two cups of cooked rice, and one cup of oats. It could be rolled oats, it could be quick cooking oats. Don't use steel cut oats, but rolled oats are quick cooking oats. So three, two, one, that's where your base is and then a fourth cup of some sort of liquid or sauce. That could be a ketchup, that could be a barbecue sauce, that could be water, that could be vegetable broth, that could be, you know, that could be a lot of different options. And then from there, you can add in your favorite spices and your favorite seasonings. You're gonna mix it all together, either using a stand mixer, a food processor, or a good old fork and a forearm, and mix it together, form it into patties, and it can be baked, it can be grilled, and uh, that's a, or air fried. That's a, that's a wonderful recipe that we use pretty much nightly during the mm-hmm. summertime. Um, just because again, we have those cooked, we have that cooked rice, we have those cooked beans. Um, and then dessert, nice cream. You cannot beat nice cream. Uh, don't let anybody tell you that you can't beat it because you can't beat nice cream. It, it, frozen banana, three frozen bananas, a fourth cup of plant-based milk or water and some cacao powder or some peanut powder um, or just some cinnamon or some extra fruit in there. We just like it nice and simple, just some cacao, a chocolate, chocolate, nice cream. Um, 
easy to do. You do it in a Vitamix, you can do it in a food processor. You can't use the fork and forearm method, but you can use those pretty, or you could buy a Yonanas, you can buy um, different things there. But normally if you have a blender, you have a food processor, it will work. And so nice cream for dinner is, is, is a big one for us. And if you don't like bananas, a lot of people, oh, I can't have bananas. I'm either allergic or I don't like them or they upset my stomach or whatnot. Well, you can use any frozen fruit pretty much. Mm. And you can also use cooked, cooled, frozen sweet potatoes. And mm -hmm. that's, a, that's another favorite of ours is a frozen sweet potato and ice cream. And so those are just yes. some ones. Hopefully you can see that we really do build our diet and we hope to help others build their diet around those starchy staples, around those, um, those staple foods that you can buy cheaply. You can buy cheaply, you can buy organically, you can buy in bulk, you can save money on, and that you can batch cook to where you can cook a pot of beans for the week. Cook an instant pot full of beans for the week, set it in the, you let it cool, set it in the fridge. You don't have to worry about it again. Same thing with rice, same thing with potatoes, same thing with beans. Oats normally are pretty simple to, to cook or to, to reheat or whatnot. And so we don't have oats cooked and ready to go for the week, but you certainly can do that with steel cut oats. Mm -hmm. um, but that's how we build a lot of our, a lot of our mm -hmm. diet and a lot of our recipes are off of those starchy staples because um, of just how important it is to say that it's always nice to be able to pull a recipe book out or to, to go to a website and say, I want to do this or I want to do that. But when, when, it, when the rubber meets the road and you're hungry, the kids are hungry, you just got home from work or, you know, you're, you're just, everything's going on. Having some rice, some beans, some salsa, some seasoning, a salad or whatnot, some frozen vegetables that you heat up or some fresh vegetables can be done very simply, very quickly, and most importantly, very healthfully. Um, and also on top of that, it's something that's attainable for everyone. Anyone can do that. Anyone can do that with a microwave, a stove top, with an instant pot, with an air fryer, uh, any sort of apparatus that you have, you can pretty much eat a healthy diet. Well, that was phenomenal. Let me just say this, that guy's right there. I could take that segment and just play it in front of every patient that will be done. Like my work is done. Just go follow plant-based Gabriel check out his book for sure. But you know, it's true. Even the young ones who live, you know, my son, he's 22. Those are his two buddies. They've been buddies since like middle school, mm -hmm. all in college. Gabe goes, I eat a monk diet, mom. I eat my lentils and my rice and some veggies I throw in there and I'm done. And I'm like, there you go. And it's cheap, cheaper for me because I'm, you know, <laughs> in a school, but you're exactly right. And honestly, what you said was perfect. And I'm so going to try the three, two, one. That is my new thing for the patients. I, thank you. That's awesome. That is phenomenal. So what, um, what does Miss Bridget like? You know, Bridget, Bridget likes about everything so far. You know, we, we, we did not, she was exclusively breastfed until one and we followed the, the, the advice of food before one is just for fun. And, you know, she really didn't show much, much interest in food before one. And so, um, she pretty much didn't eat anything until one. I will say her first food ever. This is a funny story, kind of a funny story. Um, <laughs> you know, we we do, you know, we grow our own food, all of our own food here. Uh, but we also live in a wonderful climate where there's wild fruit, you know, you mm. mushroom foraging, different things like that. Um, but pawpaw is a native fruit. It's North America's only native tropical fruit. It grows all the way from Easter, east shoreline of Georgia all the way up to Canada. And so it's an Eastern United States fruit and it, um, they, they do grow it actually in, in the Northwest now, but, uh, it's a one, it's wonderful. It's got about a two to three week season. We go out, we, we scout the pawpaw patch, uh, in our local areas. Bridget and I did this year. It was fun to do that this summer and fall. And when pawpaw season goes, we're out there harvesting 50 pounds, freezing it, hydrating it, doing different things like that. Uh, and we were out there and, uh, well, we, it was just me and Bridget. We were, the, the season had just started it. There was a couple ripe fruit and I was like, all right, Bridget, I, I'm eating it. And she no, showed some interest in it. I said, okay. Okay. And you know, I had, had a little bite. I pulled some of this and I gave her a little bite and, and I didn't think anything of it. You know, she had some bites and we ate it. And then the next day, the next morning, my wife, Erica, she's like, did you guys go pawpaw hunting? I go, yeah. <laughs> Why do you say so? And she's like, oh, well, you must have dropped a seed down her diaper because there was a seed there. I go, I don't think I dropped a seed down her diaper. She was pretty well dressed. And so Bridget somehow got one of these seeds that it's a pretty big seed. 
<laughs> and it uh, it made a way through, it made a, <laughs> made its way through her for about 12 and 15 hours. So so Bridget's first ever food, honest God, was was wild foraged tropical pawpaw fruit oh in a gosh. pawpaw patch. And so pretty special day. It was pretty neat. It was pretty That's neat. I mean, awesome. it was, yeah, it, it passed through. We were all good there. Uh, <laughs> so so she started out with the most basic non, you know, non, yeah, she, she, she's got a long way to go to beat that, you know. First no, I, I, I don't think anyone's ever going to beat that. That's a great story. But right when you said your wife goes, did you go far? I'm like, oh, I know where this is. I know where this is ending. <laughs> yeah are so funny but yeah when kids when you start them on their their whole feeds i'll never forget my daughter this is you know 27 years ago and you gave her those feet she just goes mm. <laughs> i just will never forget that for my life i was like it'll be my it'll be my deathbed memory it's like mm. <laughs> you know and so um, so now she she likes bananas and sweet aww. potatoes you know it's nice with the sweet potatoes you know it's something that we grow a lot of and so I bake sweet potatoes every couple of days because she'll eat them or, or we always are eating sweet potatoes. So she likes sweet potatoes, mm. Irish potatoes. She likes, she's kind of gotten into some beans. You know, we haven't like thrown a big bean burger out or anything, but mm -hmm. she's had some beans and um, rice. She's enjoying some rice and uh, some noodles. And it basically, basically to the point that, you know, it is really nice now because, you know, I, and I guess people who don't eat a whole food plant-based diet don't think like this, but you know, we think, well, we're eating all this healthy food to be healthy long term. So we don't really have to worry, you know, barring choking hazard, whatnot, but, right, but right. barring things like that, we don't really have to worry about what we're giving her because, you know, if it's spicy, she's going to tell us and not like it, but mm. she has really liked spicy food so far uh, and she's enjoyed it. And so uh, it's been nice where we can just kind of say, oh, well, you want to try some of this or try some of that. And so she's, she's really enjoyed, she's starting to kind of eat our fair food uh, as well, or the, the fair that we're eating. And so um, but definitely bananas, sweet potatoes, um, some uh, some oats. She does like some cooked oatmeal as well. So uh, she's not she's not on any schedule other than whenever about four or five hours. She, she's she's normally calling for mom, so she's still breastfeeding, and so she's uh, kind of auxiliary or supplementally eating whole plant foods still at the mm -hmm. moment. But um, mm. but she's we're we're enjoying it, and it's it's been I'll tell you this, Dottie. It's it's been it's been really nice. You know, a lot of people. Well, and I'm blessed to be able to kind of work from home and work on the farm and kind of be there with Bridget most of the day and, and Erica similarly. Um, but, um, but it has been nice to, to kind of have, bring, bring this new life in the world and everyone's like, oh, well, why are you worried about this? Are you worried about that? Are you worried about that? And, and we've kind of, kind of had this, you know, built around diet, kind of had this center of to say, no, we're not really too worried about that. Mm -hmm. As long as we're present and as long as we're eating the right things and as long as we're, you know, uh, building her up emotionally and, and, you know, being supportive through, through those different facets to say, uh, I, I think what comes tomorrow or what comes in the month or so, I, 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 I think we're, we're planning and we're preparing for it to be healthful mm -hmm. and we're planning for, for a healthy childhood. We're planning for, for, for health, health. Um, that's the big key word health. We're planning for that. We're not, uh, we're not planning for the opposite, <laughs> opposite mm -hmm. of it. And mm -hmm. so it has been very nice to, to kind of be in that, that, that state of mind to say, um, you know, we'll post a video or post a recipe or we'll post a, a picture of us and we'll say, Oh, are you worried about this? Or, or you got to check this out. Are you gonna do that? And, that? and everybody's very, very well intentioned. But, um, mm -hmm. when you look into you say, Oh, okay. We will look into it. And then be like, Oh, well, that's a bit of an overreaction. She's six months old. That's something that she may need to be doing when she's three years old or, you know, something <laughs> like that. So, so it's, it's been nice. And so we do have the approach to say, we're expecting health. We are preparing for it and we're acting upon it as well through the way that we're mm -hmm. eating and through the, the you know the way that we're operating uh, mm -hmm. day to day so that has been um it's been very enjoyable it's been very enjoyable yeah it's called conscious mindful parenting which is yeah. exactly what you need to be doing and you take what advice you feel fits and you let the rest go <laughs> oh it does it gets better and then yeah. yes i I know. I, <laughs> I, yes, I totally understand. But it's funny, my husband is Filipino. And so his family, when I was pregnant with Emily, <laughs> they're like, you can't put your hands above your head. You're going to strangle the baby with the umbilical. I was like, I'm pretty sure it'll be okay. <laughs> you know, those are just, you just, you just, you get all sorts of stuff, but I, yep. I told you that for sure. Oh my goodness gracious. Yes, absolutely. So, oh goodness. Well, this is fabulous. How can someone, first of all, get your book and where should they connect with you? 
And any last bit of advice, although I'm telling you that segment was fantastic. So what else can we pull out of your mind before we let you go? <laughs> well, everyone can find me and Bridget and Dr. Miller. It's call, her, uh, call, call my wife, Erica. Uh, find us at plantbasedgabriel.com. Uh, that's where we host our recipes and the videos and whatnot, but also YouTube, plantbasedgabriel.com and Instagram, plantbasedgabriel um, and Facebook, plantbasedgabriel. And so you can kind of reach us there. Normally, I'm not so attentive to messages, whatnot on the different social medias, but if you kind of reach out to the, the actual uh, website page, I try to get back to those uh, in a timely manner, as long as it's, um, you know, something I feel like I can, I can, I can be helpful on other than, you know, creating recipes in the book, the book you can get on Amazon. That that's pretty much uh, Barnes and Noble target, whatnot. It's, it's a lot of those different places. Um, and then the last tip, I, I think this is just to, to bring it home is you gotta keep it simple. I, I'll say this. And I know you've talked to them and you've spoken at conferences, I'm sure with, with these individuals and you've uh, you know, interviewed them is, is to say the, these lifelong healthy, whole food, plant-based eaters and practitioners uh, and experts, what you find a commonality in all of them, pretty much all of them, some of them, not so much, but most all of them is they keep it simple. They don't, they don't worry, they're, they're not losing sleep at night because they didn't get this or they didn't get that. They say, I ate a simple whole food, plant-based diet. I feel healthy my weight's healthy. My health is actually healthy. I have health. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and they keep it simple. Oats for breakfast, beans and rice for lunch, a sweet potato, a baked potato dish for dinner. You know, very simple. They find foods that they enjoy. They stick to them. They find those staple foods that they enjoy. They stick to them and they keep it simple. I find so many individuals rightfully so not rightfully so, but understandably so because they've been indoctrinated by the overcomplicated diet specific food phobias that, mm -hmm. that, you know, has just saturated the world around us to say, well, I've got to eat this, or I should eat this, or I can't eat this. Are you worried, Gabriel, that you're eating too much of this or this or that? A whole food plant-based diet built around the simple starchy staples like rice, beans, potatoes, oats, corn, quinoa, and sweet potatoes with the addition of fruits and vegetables. If I do that every day, I know I'm setting myself, my daughter, my wife, my family, my future family, uh, my grandchildren. I, mean, I know I'm setting that up for success. And so mm -hmm. keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. I did a video not too long ago. How about how, you know, kind of the process of me losing. I spoke pretty much the same thing we talked about today of losing 100 pounds to say, mm -hmm. I really just talked about keep it simple, keep it simple. Uh, and, and I did get a good response from people who said that I needed to hear that. I needed to hear mm. to keep it simple. I've been trying to meet a checklist or I've been trying to do this or that. And there's, there's merit to a lot of things, mm -hmm. but overall, if you can keep it simple, you're, you're going to be all right. It's always great to try new things. It's always great uh, to try a new recipe or to try, you know, something here, but you always have that home base or that center base to say whole food, plant-based diet, keep it simple. And just ex and understand that you can expect your health to improve. If you're eating a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet, keeping it simple, you can expect health. You can expect long-term health. You can expect not to be plagued by those chronic diseases. Whereas before, many others like myself expected to deteriorate as I got older. It expected to just be plagued by obesity, plagued by that. But it's amazing when we keep it simple, we eat the right things, those simple things, it, it seems to work out pretty good. And I know you've seen that in your practice as well. Oh, for certain. And honestly, it's, I have more than a few patients because now all of my patients are plant-based eaters. They come to me wanting me to tell them about plant-based And you have to be careful with certain things like diabetics and Crohn's disease, you know, as you were moving into a plant-based diet, there's lots of things, but the, honestly, it, it goes back to keeping it simple. It's so very important, but they get confused. They're like, well, Dr. Medugo says this, and Dr. Esselstyn says this, and Dr. Greger says this, Dr. Furman says this, all these doctors are telling me, I don't know what to do. I'm trying to do everything. I'm like, you need to stop right there. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're just going to focus on what you need. Simple stuff, easy to go. Batch cooking, just like you said, very important. <laughs> so if I could do this and being a full-time mom, working a full-time job as a doctor, you could do this. I promise you could do it well <laughs> yeah. with boys that eat a lot of food, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> but um I tell you, your story is inspirational. I love your energy. I love everything you're saying. I think you're right on. And we so appreciate you taking the time to share that amazing message with us today. Well, I really appreciate you having me on. And uh, thanks to all the listeners. And you guys all have a wonderful rest of your day and nights and year. And 
keep it simple and keep it whole food plant based. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed that video. Before you go though, please hit the subscribe button and the alert button so you will be notified whenever we upload any new videos. On Monday, we upload the Healthy Human Revolution podcast. Now, if you'd rather listen to the podcast, you can find it on all the major platforms such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and even Spotify. On Tuesdays, we upload the Doctors In. This is where I answer your questions. Thinking of that, could you please comment below any questions you might have about health or wellness or any topics that you would like me to cover? Now, if you're looking for more resources on how to start a plant-based diet, sustain a plant-based diet, exercise, recipes, anything regarding wellness, we've got you covered. Check out healthyhumanrevolution.com. And again, thanks for watching.